Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly Hank it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re -up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the bay Somebody got out the car to take a piss on the corner. I couldn't see who it was from where I was standing. Engaged in the conversation, I didn't take notice as a kid snuck around some cars, moving toward me, snuffing me in my nose. I dropped to the ground, unaware of who or what hit me. As I was getting up, I saw it was a little dirty nigga worm. The Sunday after that, Worm went back to the tunnel with a gun and opened fire on a random parked car. After shooting half his gun clip into the car, killing a young man in the driver's seat and wounding the others, Worm tried to run. But three undercover cops jumped out of a car right next to the car Worm shot up, yelling, Freeze, drop the gun! Worm fired shots at the cops while running to his car with the cops chasing and shooting at him. The cops shot up Worm's rod, riddling his body with bullets and almost killing him. Worm got 50 years to life. I was on another side of the jail, and we, my man, you know, Sherm, shout out to Sherm the Worm, he was in the jail, and he knew Norman because he lived in left right. He was from our projects, he moved to left right. So he said, yo, I want to get y'all two together. So the only way we could get together because we was on two different sides of the jail was in church. So we would go to church and there was this pastor there named Billy Wade. He was, he was dyslexic. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker would read the shit backwards. You know what I mean? Mm, that's everybody we, here. <laughs> we, didn't, we, didn't pay, we didn't pay attention to Billy Wade. We was there like, yo. What's up, my nigga? Boom, boom. So at that time, I was already in the jail about, give or take, a year before Nori got there. So I said, yo, I'm going to get you pulled to my house. So I went back to my house, made a couple of moves, got Nori pulled to my house. So I'm, I'm not going to go through this shit piece by piece, but I'm going to, you know, skip a little bit. But Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Pop a lot. Mob, mob. Mob, we on our way to NYC with it. Headshot City. Now, this story is going to start at what I call the birthplace for hip-hop in Queens, QB. But we going to put in a lot of work in Rikers Island. Now, the person that we're going to cover today, I got hundreds and hundreds of requests to cover. So we finally got to it and we talking about none other than Sherman Adams. But y'all know him as Sherm the Worm. Now, most of the people that probably know Sherm the Worm, if you're not from QB, most likely it's going to be from Prodigy's Almost Tell All book. But if you're familiar with some of the Queen's hip-hop legends, such as Cormega, such as Capone and Noriega, you probably heard of Sherm the Worm. It's a lot of legendary names in QB, like Lakey the Kid, Draws, Nut, and Sherm the Worm is going to be one of those same people that put in a lot of work in QB. He's just going to be a generation younger than some of the people that I mentioned. So like I said, most people might know Sherm the Worm from My Infamous Life, the book that was put out by Prodigy. And if you guys remember, at some point in time, he spoke in the book about Lake coming home. And that's where he would kind of go in detail about a night that they were going to a club. And supposedly, he was supposed to get some guys from QB in. And to be honest, when I was listening to the book, the name of the people that he was supposed to get into the club that night was almost like a who's who of street dudes from QB. And Sherm the Worm just happened to be one of those people, as well as Lake. Now, it was a situation where Prodigy had them waiting in the front to try to get in. For some reason, that didn't happen. And one of the individual's car would end up being towed. And that's ultimately how Prodigy got to the point where he was saying he was having a conversation with Lake, the kid. He seen somebody get out the car that they was in. 
looked like they were going to take a piss on the side of the road. Before he knew it, he was punched and his chain was snatched off. And the person that he said was responsible for that was going to be Sherman the Worm. Now, I'm going to try to break down a little bit more than that because that's what most people know about. Now, what a lot of people don't know about Sherman the Worm is he's going to be the one most responsible for the forming of the group Capone and Noriega because he was familiar with Capone, but he was housed with Noriega. And, and a lot of media outlets, I saw where they said that he initiated the meeting between the two. So if we want to be literal, it probably would not be no Capone and Noriega if it wasn't for Sherm the Worm. Who knows? They might have met, but he's going to be the individual responsible for getting them together. Now, in September of 1993, on the 13th day of the month, according to authorities, they allege that Sherm the Worm is responsible for a shooting that happened outside of the Tunnel nightclub that ended up killing two victims and seriously wounding a third victim. Now, based on most media reports, they're going to say that the shootings followed an altercation in which one of the defendants, Marcus McLaughlin, had apparently had with a group of black males at the nightclub earlier in that evening. Now, the state would take Sherm to trial three times just to convict him. Now, his conviction was followed by two earlier mistrials in which each jury was unable to agree on a unanimous verdict. Now, his first trial will result in a mistrial on April 21st, 2001, and trial number two would also result in a mistrial on October 30th, 2002. So it was not an open and shut case. And based on my research, I saw where Sherm's sister, Natoka Williams, was working with her brother and a group called the Innocence Commission, where they spoke with Sherman the Worm and he said, I'm just trying to be vindicated and quote, I want my rightful innocence restored. Now with most people, that's gonna be the end of the story. Once you take them off the streets, the story dies down. But with Sherman the Worm, he's gonna be one of those rare cases when someone can probably argue that his name got bigger after going to jail. Now, in 1997, while serving those two life sentences, he was assigned the highest ranking blood member inside of Rikers Island Adolescent Reception and Detention Center. Now, as a teenager, he was dubbed the superior of all adolescents. And that's going to say because of his willingness to openly slash and cut rivals. Now, based on all of that activity, he was awarded the department's highest security level rating, which was a code two. And based on reports, they're going to say that even prison officers were a little bit nervous of dealing with him. Now, if anybody know anything about Rikers Island, they're going to have what I would and some people would call predicate cutters. And Sherm definitely sound like he was a predicate cutter. They had stories about how they would have to handle him and move him around wearing black mitts on his hands whenever he left his cell for court appearance or to see visitors just to try to cut down on the chances of somebody getting marked up. Now, with it being 2022, Sherm has served over two decades inside the penal system. And it's crazy because his name still rings bells today even with stuff that he didn't do. It would be rumors of, oh, Sherm got cut in jail. So you would hear all kinds of rumors and stories, whether true or false, just because who he was. And I'm going to say, if you could make a name for yourself in QB, you can make a name for yourself in any part of the world. Now, y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all hit the subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box below. Let me know what cities we need to go to, what gangsters we miss, where we haven't been to next, what's the big case that we missed. And y'all get at me however y'all see fit. Y'all call me, text me, tweet me. 
tag me, mention me, CC me, email me, stop me in the streets. However y'all want to do it. I'm with all the shits. It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob, mob, mob.